Hey everybody, it's Jasmine, and today I'm bringing you guys this makeup tutorial on this look right here. This epitome of fall makeup tutorial. It's really cute and I've been wearing it almost every single day or different variations of it but using the same palette. It has just been a dream to work with. But I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who requested this look but also who left positive comments and positive feedback on Friday's upload. It was just so comforting and nice to just sit down and have a conversation with you guys about what it's like to actually film videos it was just a, I guess you could say it was a vulnerable video, but also I wanted it to be as informative as possible. So thank you guys so much. And without further ado, let's go on into the tutorial. Can you guys tell that this is a towel? I was doing laundry earlier and this came up and I thought that it was really pretty. So... I'm gonna use it. Let's go into the makeup. So for primer today, I'm using my Catrice Keep Me Matte Primer, one of my absolute favorites. I'm almost done with this. This is the reason why you keep seeing it in my tutorials. It's because I'm almost done. I think this is my favorite primer because it's lightweight and hydrating, but underneath your foundation, it does not look dry or mattifying but I can tell a difference when it comes to longevity in my foundation when I do apply this primer. So it's great, it's inexpensive, you can get it at Ulta, and you could totally use your coupons on it. Because I have my ring light on, you probably can't tell that my neck is actually a little bit lighter than my face. So right here, it just looks a little bit more light, a little bit more yellow than my actual face. So I'm going to go ahead and do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to grab one of my Anastasia contour sticks. This is actually the shade Banana. And I'm actually going to go ahead and paint this on my entire cheek area here and anywhere that's closest to my neck so that when I apply my foundation, it can match a little bit better in this region. I'm gonna go ahead and blend this in with my Elysium Jada brush, and I'm just going to just lightly buff it in. I don't wanna do too much because we are going to apply foundation right on top. And the strange thing is, is that my forehead is a little bit darker than my cheek area, and then my neck is so light. So I have to do this trick because in the end, after the foundation is all said and done, it looks evened out, but it's just right now. I don't know what's going on, but this is what's working for me right now, so I'm going to stick to it. For foundation, I'm using up another product that I am almost out of. This is my Catrice HD foundation, one of my absolute favorites. I'm trying to run through foundations at the moment because I feel like they're just the hardest thing to run out of. By the way, I use the shade Golden Beige in this foundation. Just to brighten up my under eyes a little bit, I'm going to take my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Moonstone, and I'll just apply that right here. And I'm just going to take a touch of shape tape just under the eyes, just like that. <gasps> oh no, this is the last of my brow whiz. I guess we'll make it work for one eyebrow, shall we? Okay, I have the shade Dark Brown in my brow whiz. Now, for my eyebrows, this has a higher arch than this, so I'm going to fake the illusion on this eyebrow to make it look a little taller. So for that, I usually start in the top as opposed to the bottom like I normally would. And I would create the arch right here. And then if I need to fix it later, I will. I just want to make sure that the arch is there so that it makes it easier for when I do conceal the brows. And then on this eyebrow, I'm going to try and bring the arch a little lower, so I'm starting on the bottom here. The brows look scary, yes I know, but we are going to fix it with a little bit of concealer. So I'm using the Shape Tape Concealer again, and I'm just going over that brow just to sharpen it up a little bit. It's not going to be perfect the first time, let me tell you, but just because one eyebrow is just taller than the other, it just makes it so much more difficult in order to get an even brow look. So lately, just me doing my brows is the longest step in my makeup routine when it used to not be. I used to just slap on the brows, but now I'm like, oh god, the brows again? I know, we are not done with the brows quite yet. I'm taking my Wet n Wild eyebrow powder 
and I'm filling in anywhere that I missed with the brow whiz simply because I was done with it. So with any areas that I need to fix and correct, I'm using my brow powder for that. I know they're bold, but we're doing a dark smoky eye today, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and set my eyelid in place with the translucent powder. This is my Laura Mercier powder. And I'm using my Sigma F35 to just set this area in place. This is just going to allow this area to be soft and smooth so that all of my eyeshadows can blend seamlessly right on top. For my eyeshadow today, I'm using a brand new palette that I got from my BoxyCharm. This is from Dominique Cosmetics. This is called their Celestial Thunder Palette. I believe this might be only exclusive to BoxyCharm, but she does have a palette called Celestial Storm, I believe, and I think the colors are very similar to what's inside here. Now, for my eyeshadow look today, I'm going to be using these two red tones, um, this dark gray brown, and then I'm mixing these two shimmers. So I'm going to be utilizing a lot of the palette today, um, and it's all about the blend. So let's go ahead into our Sigma E40. Let's go ahead and take that orange shade called Lunar Eclipse, and let's pop this into the crease. This is the first time I've ever used a Dominique Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. I've never really used anything from her brand in general, and I never realized how buttery and pigmented her shadows are with the minimal amount of fallout. It's actually kind of crazy. I really do like this formula. It stands out to me. It's very similar to, I want to say, one of my Prism makeup palettes. Um, I do love those, but those are so hard to find. And, you know, some of the shadows in there are hit or miss, but all of the shades in here just are buttery. They're smooth. They're easy to blend. So, so far for a smaller palette and for something that I got in a BoxyCharm box, I'm really, really liking this. We're switching brushes to an E39 from Sigma and we're taking that gray brown in the palette and that one is called Zero Gravity. And this is going to be our main color focus. So I like to focus it on the outer corner here and then I'll blend it out later. I just wanna make sure that I am packing on full pigment of this shade. With my E35 from Sigma, I'm gonna mix these two shades here, dust off the excess and then let's start blending. So I'm going to go ahead and work pretty low, more so on the eyelid area, and then I will blend up just because I want a little bit more control and I don't want this brown to go all the way up to my brow bone. I just want it to stay right in that crease area. We're going back to the E39 with that gray brown and we are going to just pack on that shade again because we want it to come back to life since we did blend it away. I don't know why I'm taking it on my eyelid, but I mean, you can if you want. It'll be a base for the uh, shimmery eyeshadows. For the shimmers, we're gonna be using our fingers. So I'm gonna take Black Matter. This is a very interesting shade. It's like a purple, but it also has pink and blue reflex in it. Very, very interesting and unique, especially in this palette because a lot of the mattes are warm tone. So then you get into this really cool purple and you're just like, whoa, totally shifts the look to something different. Then we're gonna go into Eternal Light, which is so, freaking pretty. It's like this glittery metallic shimmer and I'm going to go ahead and apply this generously on top of black matter. This is going to shift the color again so it's going to look a little bit more like a gunmetal shade. Liner and lashes will add more intensity to this eye look so we're going to do a fierce wing with the NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner. I'm going to use a new sample mascara. This is by Shiseido. This is their Controlled Chaos Mascara. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. I don't know how I feel about this mascara in particular, simply because I'm such an avid user of drugstore mascaras. And this one to me, it's just like your typical mascara. It lengthens, it volumes, but I don't know if I would necessarily pay money for it. It's something that I would love to get in samples again, but I just, don't realistically see myself buying the full size. We're gonna take some brown eyeliner and we are going to line our waterline. On my Sigma E20, I'm using the shade called Zero Gravity and I'm applying this right near that brown liner. 
I just love how intense this looks. I'm slowly building it up because I don't want this to get too crazy. Then using my Sigma E32, I'm going to go ahead and take the orange and we are going to go back and forth with blending. So I'm blending this right on top of zero gravity, but I'm also allowing it to fade down a little bit. And this is another trick that I've been doing recently. So I didn't add any powder under my eyes earlier. So now I'm gonna do that, but also with my brush, I'm going to go right up to my lash line. I'm gonna blend a little bit. So I'm doing like a two in one. I'm setting and I'm blending. We're hopping right into fake eyelashes. So I'm using the Shot Miss A Tracy eyelash. These are so beautiful. I really, really like them. I'm just gonna go ahead and press these on. Oof, they are like wispy but long. They don't reach my eyebrow. They are just so freaking beautiful. And I just love the fact that they aren't too crisscross to the point where it looks fake. I did a full review on my last Shot Miss A video that I uploaded last week. I just had a coughing attack, so don't mind my watery eyes. But these lashes, mmm so pretty i'm gonna go ahead and do my bottom mascara and then we're just gonna go into the face for bronzer we're gonna use my favorite bronzer today this is my catrice sun lover bronzer in the shade sun kiss bronze i'm also gonna take this on a new favorite brush this is by elysian this is called yori i did a full review on the elysian brushes recently by the way and i think since that video i I'm really gravitating towards this one out of all of the brushes because it's dense it applies your bronzer in such a way where it applies full pigment but then you have the ability to blend it into the skin and I've never had a faster application with bronzer before so this is definitely unique even though it is an angled contour brush and everyone has one but truly I think this is a diamond in the rough because of the texture. For blush, we're gonna take the NARS Orgasm Blush and we are just going to apply that right on the apples of the cheek, blending back towards the hairline and bronzer. Ugh, this face combination, the best, looks the best in photos. I think the reason why I like this combination is because this bronzer has like a slight sheen, the blush has a slight sheen, and then when I apply the highlight, when you take flash photography, your skin just looks dewy, you don't look caked up, and it just looks immaculate. It just looks, you know? You guys haven't seen me use my Fenty highlight in a while, and I actually hit pan on this. This is Mean Money and Hustler Baby, so I always start with Mean Money. This is a slight base, and I like this because it's a soft, subtle sheen. So on days where I'm doing like a natural face and not full glam like this, I'll only use this shade. But then since I am doing a full glam look, I'm gonna take Hustler Baby, and I'm going to apply that right on top. So once you layer those two shades, you get this beaming, beaming highlight that just looks so delicious, so wet. Your skin looks like you've been sweating all day, but it's not a gross sweat, it's like a beautiful sweat. It is just the best. I'm also gonna take this into the inner corners just to liven things up because we do have a dark shade on our eyes and this is going to widen it up. I always skip this step in my tutorials, but brow gel. I always do brow gel and today I have a sample of the Anastasia one. This is just the clear kind and this is so good. I have never used Anastasia brow gels before, but this just locks in that brow and I find myself really gravitating towards this on no makeup days. I'll just run this through my natural brows and my brows just look so good with this even though it's clear. It's just crazy. I don't know. I think I need the full size now. For my lip combination, we are going to do a warm nude. We're gonna do the Real Her I Am Confident Lip Liner, and then we are going to pair that with the Amuse Cosmetics Creamy Matte Lipstick in the shade Lingerie. I'm almost done with this setting spray, so we're just gonna use it. This is by Catrice, this is their matte finish spray. Now, instead of making you look matte, it actually just locks in the makeup and makes it last so much longer. However, I do feel like if you go in with a matte 
primer, a matte foundation, and then this matte spray. Ooh, your face will literally just look so matte all day. If you don't like that dew, then definitely do that. But since I love looking dewy, I kind of just use this as a long lasting agent for my face. All right, everyone, that wraps up my video. Hope you guys all enjoy. Now, I am curious on what other fall tutorials you would like to see, like, are there certain color schemes you want me to use? Um, things like that because I have a lot of tutorials. So I kind of just want to know like do you guys want more holiday type of tutorials or more casual or anything like that? I'd be more than willing to do them for you. As always, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye! Peace out Girl Scouts!